Hey guys, today we're going to be working on chapter 3, the chemistry of organic molecules. This video is going to focus on section 1. Section 1 covers organic molecules, how they are formed, and how they are broken down. Organ organic molecules contain both carbon and hydrogen atoms. There are four classes of these biomolecules. They are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. The functions of the four biomolecules and cells are extremely diverse, and we're going to discuss them later on in this chapter. Here is a chart from your book. Um, it talks about the different structures um, of biomolecules. The R stands for a carbon chain, so each R here represents a chain of carbon uh, atoms bonded together. The difference in each of these is the structure that is added to that carbon chain. So right here we have an OH bonded to a carbon chain that is called a hydroxyl. Um, you can go through and look at all of these. A carbonyl has a carbon chain with a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom and the carbon is also bonded to a hydrogen. Here we have two carbon chains on either side of a carbon that has been double bonded to an oxygen. Here we have an, a carboxyl acid. We have a chain of carbons bonded to a carbon that has been bonded to double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to a OH, which you will remember is a hydroxide. An amino is a carbon chain bonded to a nitrogen that is single bonded to two hydrogens. Um, here we have a sulfhydryl, which is a carbon chain bonded to a sulfur and a hydrogen. And down here we have a carbon chain bonded to an oxygen that has been bonded to a phosphate, which is also bonded to an oxygen and two hydroxides. The carbon atom. The carbon atom is small with only six electrons, two in the first shell and four in the outermost shell. Carbon can form four covalent bonds because it only has four electrons in its outer shell. It wants to share electrons with other atoms to get to that eight, that magic eight, that octet rule that we talked about last chapter. It will bond with other carbon atoms with nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, or sulfur. Um, a carbon-carbon bond is extremely stable. Okay, it doesn't like to, to break very well. Long carbon chains called hydrocarbons can be formed because of those stable carbon-carbon bonds. They can form single bonds, which means they share one pair of electrons. Double bonds, meaning they share two pairs of electrons. Triple bonds, meaning they have three pairs of electrons that they're sharing, and they can form ring structures. Branches at any carbon make carbon chains more complex. Carbon skeleton in functional groups. The carbon chain of an organic molecule is called a skeleton or backbone. I use the term backbone more frequently than skeleton, but they are both accepted. Functional groups are clusters of specific atoms bonded to that, scar that carbon skeleton with characteristic structures and functions. They determine the chemical reactivity and the polarity of those organic molecules. So if I were to replace a hydrogen uh, with an OH with a hydroxide and a two carbon hydrocarbon called ethane, it turns it into ethanol. It was hydrophobic and now it is hydrophilic just by switching one atom in that molecule. Isomers are organic molecules that have identical molecular formulas, but they have a different arrangement of atoms. So if I were to count the carbons in this glyceraldehyde. I have one, two, three. If I look over here at this dihydroxide acetone, 
I have three as well. I have the exact same number of hydrogens and the exact same number of oxygens. The only difference is the way that they have been put together. It's like if I gave everybody in class a set of Legos that have exactly the same pieces, odds are we are all going to build something that looks a little bit different. The biomolecules of cells, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids are called biomolecules. They usually consist of many repeating units. Those repeating units are called monomers. A molecule composed of many monomers put together is called a polymer. An example would be an amino acid, which is the single unit that are joined together to form a protein, which is the polymer. Lipids are not considered polymers because they contain two different types of subunits. All the other biomolecules that we're going to talk about are the same unit over and over and over and over again. Here is a table showing the four kinds of biomolecules that we're going to discuss. The asterisk indicates that they form polymers, which is one unit repeated over and over and over again. The monomer of carbohydrates are monosaccharides, mono meaning one. The polymer are polysaccharides, poly meaning many. Lipids are formed by two molecules, a glycerol and fatty acids. They are known at once they have been put together as a fat. Proteins are made out of amino acid monomers and they form polypeptides. Nucleic acids are formed from nucleotides and they make up the molecules DNA and RNA. Synthesis and degradation. A dehydration reaction is a chemical reaction in which subunits are joined together by the formation of a covalent bond and water is produced during the reaction. It's used to connect monomers together to make a polymer. For example, the formation of starch from glucose subunits. Um, don't worry, we're going to go into more detail about this in just a minute. I've got some diagrams for you. Hydrolysis reactions are chemical reactions in which a water molecule is added to a molecule in order to break the covalent bond. So dehydration puts them together, hydrolysis takes them apart again. So an example of hydrolysis would be the digestion of starch in your stomach. Um, your stomach will take that large starch molecule and break it down into single glucose monomers, single pieces that your body can then absorb much more easily. So here is a monomer, okay? It has a hydroxide, an OH, here. And we are going to bond it with another monomer that has a hydrogen atom just hanging out here on the end. They are going to come together. The hydroxide and the hydrogen are going to come together and form an oxygen, a, not an oxygen, I'm sorry guys, a water molecule. When they remove, whenever the hydroxide and the hydrogen um, are removed, it forms a bond between monomer number one and monomer number two. And it will look something like this, and we have a water molecule left. That is why it's called dehydration, because we are taking a water molecule out of our polymer. So the opposite of uh, dehydration synthesis is hydrolysis, where we take the water molecule, we put it back between the monomers, and the bond breaks, and now we have two smaller to um, monomers once again. Special molecules called enzymes are required for cells to carry out dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. These enzymes are the things that make it happen. An enzyme is a molecule that speeds up a chemical reaction. Without these enzymes, the, uh, the reaction would require too much energy and it wouldn't happen naturally. Enzymes are not consumed in the reaction. They're, they're not used up. They're left over at the end. They can stick around to do it again and again and again. 
They're not changed by the reaction, and they're known as catalysts. They lower the energy that is required for the reaction to take place so that it can happen much more quickly. So here are some examples of organisms that have biomolecules, these large macromolecules. We have a cactus over here. We have a crab and a bacteria. We're going to go into more depth later on talking about which uh, macromolecules or biomolecule is in each of these structures. So if you have any questions, please go back, watch the video, email me, um, ask me in class tomorrow. Okay, uh, that is it for today. Bye guys.